it's a beautiful rainy day in Sydney <laughs> and I woke up today feeling quite um, lethargic so today's flow I really wanted to create something for you guys that helped you reconnect with yourself and keep you a little bit quiet so um, our other flows have been I guess a lot more um, active and hard I think this one will be similarly uh, challenging but in a way that I guess you get to control how challenging it is for you okay so modify it as much as you want um, and yeah so today's uh, today's class is on expansion and contraction I've been thinking a lot about the idea of the cycles in life and one thing that something that one of my teachers taught me once was uh, in utero so as a fetus we actually begin growing from the spine so we start off as this tiny little and we start we start contracted and as we evolve we begin expanding expanding and opening up and eventually we're completely expanded right as we grow older as seasons change we tend to shrink we get a little smaller we begin contracting again. So today, I really wanted to try and embody that experience for you. And um, I mean, it's a similar thing that you see in nature, right? We go through our expansion in spring and summer, and again, we wind back down and contract in uh, autumn and winter. So today, I really wanted to look at that. Um, I've sent you all the playlist. Feel free to uh, press play now. Okay, so we begin sitting on our heels, toes tucked, arms, actually today we're going to place the arms on either side of us with the palms facing up, forehead down to on the ground and just start taking a few breaths here. Today's practice, I'm trying not to cue as much just to give you your space uh, to feel what you need to feel as we go through this flow i'd really like you to try and pay attention to your breath and move in time with it breath or prana is our life force and yet we do it so simply without thinking Can you hear your breath now? If your eyes are not closed, please close them over. And if you can't hear your breath, can you feel it somewhere? Can you feel it in the rise and fall of your tummy and your thighs? Your balasana today, if you'd like, bring your knees close together just to keep this feeling of almost a fetus position. And think back to a time where you held space like this for yourself. Where you felt safe. Open your eyes, inhale and as you inhale, we're going to rise up only just to all fours. So hands stacked under shoulders, knees stacked under hips. And today we're going to do some sliders. So I want you to take your left hand and bring it, thread it in between. This is also called threading the needle, I think. <laughs> so thread it under your right arm and place your head in ground. So your shoulder and your head's on the ground but nothing has moved in your lower body. Press back up as you inhale, exhale the leaf on the other side. And up we go again. So again, nothing's changed in the lower body, just the upper body is threading through the needle. And option here, if you want to take the hand that's resting on the ground, so your right hand at this moment, you can take it 
to your back. I can show you on the other side. So we press back up with our right hand, left hand down on the ground, right hand now slides through. And if you'd like to take that option, you bring your left hand up. I'm not sure if you can see me, but your hand can come all the way to your right thigh. So we're really opening up the chest. And let go and extend, press back up. And here we go again, left extension. This is um, like flushing out your spine, okay? The spine protects a bunch of nerves. So we need to make sure, press up and keep moving with your, at your own pace and time. We need to make sure that we're keeping the spine as flexible as we can so that our nerves have room to move and to grow. One more flat time on the other side. And again, I want you to be pressing up in line up in um with your own breath, not not with my cues, okay? Keeping kind of close to the ground. I mean, I know we go into all fours, but can we stay close to the ground? We're still in our contraction zone. One more. And pressing back up, we're going to sit back on our heel. And today we're going to try our cat cow uh, just sitting down. So if you'd like, you can place your one hand on your chest and one on your belly. So you can really feel yourself move or keep your palms on your thighs. Totally up to you. We're going to inhale. We're going to press the belly forward, lift uh, the tailbone and open the chest up. Let the head roll back. And exhale, pressing the tailbone in. We need to move. Move with your breath. So maybe you don't hold it as long as I do. Maybe you move a little quicker, but I don't want you to be pushing your body, okay? Today we're moving ourselves where we're at and we're moving with our breath. Beautiful. One more cycle. Where we are at, we're going to move in a straight back. We're going to tuck our toes. And Alex, this is a good one for you. This is releasing the fascia in our feet. So that space that is in between our ball of our feet and our heel, that arch, once we sit back on our feet, this is going to start stretching them out. Now, if this is a bit too painful for you, that's fine. You can place your hands on the ground. Um, but I just want you to be honest with yourself. Where can you sit somewhere that's a little uncomfortable but not painful? Enough to be stretching them out. Arm drag up to the sky. And look, you can see our first expansion. We've come all the way from Balasana, all the way up, reaching to the sky. Head can rise. Gazing over the top of your fingers. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Close your eyes over. And just set an intention for today's practice. to try and think about how we move in cycles. Just as nature and mother earth and ourselves, we have our bigger cycles of life and death. Other things happen in between. Do we have a daily cycle? Weekly, monthly. And as women, we've got monthly. <laughs> Exhale, open your eyes. Hands come to the ground. Untuck the toes, just sit back on our heels, and we're going to do a few neck stretches. Can you guys hear me? Just, yep, I hope you can. Um, if you're joining me online later on, um, 
Okay, so good to know. Second. Okay, good. Thanks, Jimmy. Speak a little louder. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry, I'm getting really into it. I think that's <laughs> all right. Sitting back on our heels and we're gonna do a few neck stretches. So hands come out wide. I want you to take your left hand behind your back and your right hand is gonna meet your wrist. And we're gonna pull over our neck to the right side, opening up the right side of our neck. Close your eyes over if that's more comfortable. And again, try and be honest with yourself. It's an opportunity to grow, to stretch, to expand. If you're not feeling the stretch, can you dig a little deeper? We're gonna swap sides. Right arm comes behind our back, our left hand's holding our right wrist. And if you're comfortable, we use our hand and we just fold over our neck, our head sorry, to the left of our body. So our left, our right side of us, neck is stretching. Apologies if I've mixed all that up, <laughs> but I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> Again, every opportunity to be still gives us a chance to reconnect with our breath, our life force. Exhale, release the head. And just one more, I want you to bring your hands together. We're gonna to clasp them at the back of your neck and just slowly round over as if we're going into our cat position. So our whole spine, if you close your eyes over, you can imagine your whole spine is con uh, contracting, so slowly rolling over. Not contracting in the sense of a muscle contracting, but keeping itself smaller and folded over. And as we let go, release the hands, inhale and extend open. Bring your hands down on either side of you. Open your chest up, feel that expansion and release back to center. And we're gonna come up into all fours. And now we begin coming off the ground. So into all fours, stacking the knees under the hips and wrists under the shoulders. We're gonna extend our left leg and we're gonna do a few kickbacks this time, okay? So inhale, kick a little bit higher than, um, than your hips and exhale, tap the floor all the way down. This is a slow movement for so you to go in time with your breath. We're not forcing it. I want you to feel the muscles wake up. So we're gonna do three more of those. If you can here, we we'll keep the tummy tucked. You should be feeling it in your hamstring as if you're pressing something away. And here we go, we're gonna cross over. So bring that left uh, foot over to the other side of your right foot. So crossing over, inhale, lift that left leg left up and tap it onto the left side of your mat. So inhale, we're crossing over, right side, tap down. Inhale again and exhale, lower down to the ground on the left side. We're gonna do three more like this. I really hope uh, if you guys got the music on that that helps you get into the zone a little bit. I've got a pot plant on my foot that I keep kicking. And so I hope again that you've got enough room in your space. And when you finish your five, we place that knee back down under our hips. We're going to walk our hands forward and tuck the toes, lift the knees, we're in our high plank position. We're gonna go down into chaturanga. So if you can tell we're still in our contraction phase, 
So inhale, shift your weight forward. Exhale, lower down for three, two, one. Beautiful. Don't untuck the toes yet. We're going to press back up slowly and controlled. Feel all the muscles in your body awaken. And again, we're going to lower for three, two, one. Beautiful, guys. Don't untuck your toes. One more time. Press back up. All your body moving together. This time I want you to lift up your left foot as we lower. Three, two, keep it one, lifted. One, beautiful, all the way down. Now, untuck the toes. And we're just going to come up into a cobra. So a little chest heart opener. Take a few breaths here. And exhale. When you tuck the toes again, we're not going into down dog. Press up into plank. And then lower your knees and we're going to swap sides. We'll do our hamstring kickbacks this time on our right leg. So exhale, extend the leg. When you're comfortable, make sure that back foot's planted down into the mat or the ground. Exhale, lift the leg. And tap the floor. Beautiful. All the way up, one slow, controlled movement. And keep going at your own pace. What five of those? <laughs> Beautiful. And when you finish those, I want you to extend the leg. And we're going to cross over to our left side. Back up, right side. And keep that going. We should be feeling it in our glutes here. Can you connect? to the strength in your glute, our hips and our glutes, our bum, in case you didn't know, <laughs> is where we actually keep a lot of our uh, emotional baggage. So as we work through it and exercise it, we cleanse it. And we'll meet back in our tabletop. Beautiful work, guys. Walk your hands a little forward, legs come out, back into our high plank. And we're going to repeat that same process. Three chaturangas. Three, two, one. Lowering all the way down. Don't untuck the toes. Press back up. So in this, I don't want you to see it like a push-up, right? I want you to move really slowly and feel your entire body wake up. Exhale, press back up. Good job, guys. Now this last one. Keep that right leg lifted if you can. All the way down. Three, two, one. Beautiful. Now we can untuck the toes. Open up to Cobra. Now we're still quite close to the ground. I want you to press up onto all fours and bring your right leg up next to your left. I'm just going to take my socks off that you tuck that back toe. And we're going to lift up into Anjaneyasana or Crescent Lunge. So if you know that one, you can lift up. Otherwise, give me one second. <laughs> Lifting up. And we're going to say arrowhead this time. Hands come and extend behind you. We're staying close to the ground. Extend the arms like you're reaching out. Reaching out for someone to hold you. Hands come to heart center. Lift the chest, and we're going to do a rotated crescent lunge. So we place the left tricep onto your right thigh, and if you'd like, you can fist that, <laughs> create a fist with the right hand to open up your chest. Beautiful. A few breaths here, my friends. Keep that back leg up. As soon as you lower it, you'll find a lot more weight in that front leg. So extend that back leg. Exhale, hands come down. We're going to go into a half split. So slowly start shifting your weight onto the front foot. Extend the front foot and your back leg is going to lift up to the sky. You can point your toes. But as you can see, this is where I'm at. <laughs> so again, meet yourself where you're at. Feel the earth. And if you, can't, if you want to keep your hands on the ground um, and you can't keep that front leg straight, that's fine. You bend it. And 
and exhale, bringing that back leg back down. We're going to walk the right leg out. So it's on the outer edge of our mat. And both of our hands are on the inside of our leg. If you want, you can lower that back leg. This is lizard lunge, okay? So here we're opening up our groin. So if you can and you're flexible enough, you can bring your arms down. Otherwise, you keep your hands up and you play with where you're at. So just roll around a little bit. I like to keep my toe tucked because I like to feel my weight move. So use your arms and your upper body to feel yourself open. We're beginning to expand. And if you find a spot that's juicy and you really want to stretch and sit in it, you stay there. Remember to breathe. And the next exhale, bring that front foot back to meet the back. And the left leg's going to come up on the inside of your left leg. So back to Anjaneyasana. We set up the back leg, ball of foot under heel of foot. Front foot's in a right angle. Press into the earth. And when you feel comfortable, extend the arms behind you. Arrowhead, Anjaneyasana. Beautiful. Inhale, arms rise up to meet in heart center. In prayer, and we're going to twist open again. So I'm going to swap sides for you. We're twisting, rotated. Nice work, you guys. Extend that back leg, keep that strain. And exhale. Uh, all the way down. Up, oh, we're going to come to our single leg split. <laughs> Bring your weight into that front foot and extend your back foot up to the sky. So this is like our forward fold, just with one leg. Two more breaths here. And exhale. Bring that back leg back down. And we're going to walk through the left leg over to the outer edge of the mat. And again, if you'd like, you can lower that leg. We're going into a lizard lunge. If you can get your forearms on the ground, you can stay there. If not, you can lift up. You can lift up that back leg and find your juicy point. I want you to think of these kind of movements like a dance. Front foot goes back to meet your back foot. We're in our high plank. I'm going to slowly shift our weight forward and lower down for three, two. One, beautiful. Untuck those toes, lifting up into cobra. And this time, I want you to place your hands directly under your elbows. I know it's hard to see where your body is in time and space, but we're going to press up all the way to up dog. See, see how my thighs are on the ground? Can you lift them up off the ground using the tops of your toes at the back of the mat? Opening your heart, and we begin to expand. Exhale, lifting the hips, pressing the earth away, untucking the toes, and we're in our first down dog of the day. Hmm, we've gotten off the floor. And when you feel comfortable, just walk out, pedal your feet out. Find your breath once again.
Inhale, look to your hands. We're going to slowly walk up. I'm going to turn around, <laughs> but you walk up here. And exhale, forward fold. Okay, working to get our hips over our ankles. Sometimes this can give you the sensation like you're going to fall over. But you use the strength of your feet to monkey grip into the earth. And if you activate your quads, so your thigh bones lift up, this will help open up your hamstrings. Inhale, halfway lift, opening up the back, keeping a straight spine. Exhale, hands come to the ground, bend your knees, use your right leg, step back, sorry, right or left up here. <clears throat> and step back to meet. We're back in our high plank. We're gonna lift our left leg. We're gonna shift forward and slowly lower down. Three, two, one. Beautiful, both feet on the ground, extend into Cobra. And if you feel comfortable, into your up dog. So keep both thighs lifted. Exhale, lifting up into our down dog. Take a few breaths here. Find your breath. Inhale. Bring the feet together to touch at the back of the mat. Left leg rises to the sky. Inhale, bend that knee. Tuck it in to meet your left elbow and plant that left foot next to your left hand. We're going to set up the back foot for warrior one this time. So the back foot comes in just a little. And we're working to get an angle that's, at 90, um, that's pointing to the top right hand side of your mat. Okay, So if your calves or your ankles are not that flexible yet, you can extend the foot a little bit further out, but ideally almost straight. Okay. Bend that front foot 90 degree angle. So perhaps you need to walk your foot forward a little. And inhale, arms rise up. This is warrior one. Hands are facing each other. Straight up. Beautiful. And sit here. Tuck the tummy, bringing your hip bones and your lower ribs together or tucking the tailbone. Whatever cue works for you. Can we lift higher while planting lower? Exhale, I want you to rotate that back foot. So it's parallel to the back of the mat and we open up into warrior two. Beautiful. Extend your arms. And we're gonna ro uh, straighten that front leg, rotate it so it's parallel to the front of your mat. And we're going to our first wide-legged forward fold. So slowly fold over all the way down. Nice work, you guys. And if you'd like, we're going to grab our hands at the base of our spine. We're going to interlock them. And we're going to expand, open up to the sky. If that's not comfortable for you, you bring them back down. Whatever helps you. We're going to press up. So we're up in our standing forward fold position. Okay, so I want to try something with you guys for your shoulders. I've called it a scapular squeeze. I'm sure it has a more scientific name. You guys stay where you are. And if you can see me, I'm just going to show you um, what it looks like. So we're going to bring our elbows in line with our shoulders. So we've kind of got that right angle going on. And our scapular squeeze, as you can probably guess, is bringing our two shoulder blades together, 
and letting go. So it's as if we're using one of those machines at the gym, of which I can't remember the name. So I want you to do five of those yourself. And again, this practice is for you. So I want you to decide how hard do you want to squeeze those shoulders? I'm just going to put my shirt back up. And keep going. And at the end of your fifth one, we're going to try it again. But this time we're going to incorporate our legs. So we're going to rotate our feet a little bit out to the kind of uh, pointing to the corners of our mat. We're going to bend our legs. I want to, you to make sure your knees are not falling in. I want them to be sitting up directly under your heel, or on top of your heels rather. We're going to bring our arms up so we're in goddess pose. And we're going to try out the scapular squeeze at the same time. So keep that deep squat. Inhale, squeeze the scapular blades together. And exhale. Beautiful. Two more like this. Keeping a static bottom half of your body. Exhale and release, stand up. So we're starting to feel some burn in our thighs. So we're going to do it again. I'm going to do it this way for you because I'd like you to try one more variation. So on your inhale, take a breath and exhale everything out. Inhale again and exhale lower into your goddess pose. Arms come up this time. As you inhale, I want you to roll your whole uh, front body open like we're in our cow pose. And exhale all the way close. Cat pose. Not super flattering, but really opening up our body. And so here you can see, guys, we're going to keep doing this. You can see we've moved all the way from Balasana into this big expansive space where all four limbs are exploding. Two more, two more. Try and keep evenness between the two sides of your body. Exhale. One more, good job you guys. And release, stand up, straighten your legs. You can lift them up a little bit. Nice work. Uh, we're going into back to our forward fold. Forward fold. Hands come to the earth. You might need to widen your legs a little bit. Again, rotate your feet in so they're not facing out. And your left leg should be at the front of your mat. We're going to walk our hands over, rotate our feet. So we should be in, I guess, the bottom of Anjaneyasana. And we're going to go back into our half split, but this time this is called warrior three. Okay, so if you want to watch me for a second, we're going to shift our weight into that front foot. We're going to lift or straighten that back leg, but that back leg is actually not going up past our hips, okay? We want it in line. And as you find your center, press the earth with that front foot, lift your hip up, and when you feel comfortable, you can bring your hands back like our arrowhead on Janayasana. Difficult to do while I'm talking. <laughs> but find your drishti or your gaze point and here we go. Inhale, shift your weight forward, extend that back leg, press the earth away with your front leg, keep that back leg engaged. When you feel comfortable, we extend our arms backwards, warrior three. I don't have my balance on today, <laughs> maybe you do. And Exhale, bring that back foot up to meet your front foot, forward fold. Great, great work, you guys. Just feel your body here for a second. Bend your knees. You can bring your hands in to meet your elbows and rock yourself out. So again, you see we've just done big expansion and our body yearns to contract. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold, you're doing so well. Inhale, rolling up the spine all the way, all the way. Arms come up to the sky. And we're doing 
And now the sun salutation hands from the heart center as we exhale, take a moment. Stand in Tadasana, mountain pose. This is our body's equilibrium. This is part of where our body yearns to live in steady, even balance. In this pose, you get a chance to check in and see if each side of your body is even, which it usually is not, and that's perfectly okay. Take one big tiger breath, exhale. You can open your mouth, make a sound, whatever feels comfortable to rinse out what we've just done. Inhale one more time, exhale again, and here we go. Inhale, arms rise up, hands come to heart center, and we exhale, fold, fold, all the way down again, working to get the crown of your head to the ground. Keep the thigh bones lifted. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, hands come down. We're going to step back into our high um, plank this time. Just like we lifted, I think we lifted the left before. So this time we'll lift the right. If I'm wrong, just you do what's right. And exhale, lower down three, two, one. Beautiful. And I'll explain why we do that in another class. But untuck the toes, lifting up into our crescent. We're shining our heart forward, squeezing your shoulder blades together, pressing the earth up and away into our up dog. Working on the back bend part of this. Exhale, downward facing dog. Mm. This is my favorite pose. Bring your feet together to tie to the back of the mat. And this time right leg rises to the sky. Feel your limbs expanding. Inhale, tuck that knee in and place it next to your right hand on the inside. I'm gonna set up the back foot for warrior one. So the back foot again points to the top left hand corner of your mat. Again, if you can't get there, you open it up a little bit, but ideally as front facing as possible. 90 degree angle in the front foot. Raise your, raise your hands straight up and over. And we sit here. Take a moment to notice where you feel more comfortable. Is it in those small contracted positions? Or is it when you expand and open up your body? And the next exhale, rotate that back foot, parallel to the back of the mat, opening up your arms. Warrior two. I'm going to turn over for you. Warrior two. Hmm. Inhale, straighten that front leg. Rotate to the front of your mat, see so a parallel back into our wide legged forward fold. This time with your wide legged forward fold, hands come to the earth. And if you feel comfortable, if your hands are on the ground and you can start moving them back, that's what we do. Eventually, our hands come all the way to the other side of our feet and our head comes to the ground. So can you walk your hands a little further back? and get a little deeper in your stretch. Contracting. Inhale, rising up. We're gonna go back into our goddess pose. I know we've done it once today, but this is the best example we have that we can, um, what's it, physicalize? <laughs> uh, expansion, arms rise up. And meet at our right angle. 
here we go, extend your scapulas, sorry, um, contract your scapulas together, squeeze, 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 exhale back to center. And we're gonna do four more like this. Beautiful, you guys are doing so well. Another two. Work on keeping those knees uh, in line with your toes. Keep squeezing. Beautiful. And when you're done, straighten the legs. Um, come down either side of you. I'm gonna do that one more time. This time we're gonna try our cat cow movement with our back at the same time. So we open up, goddess pose, arms come up again. And we're gonna inhale, open the chest up, squeeze the scapulas and open the tummy. Exhale, tucking everything in, arms come all the way to touch. Exhale, straight back down. Beautiful. Three more like this. Conscious of where your knees are in space and time. Keeping your thighs pushing out. Good job, you guys. Two more, two more. Slow movements, expansion, contraction. Good job, straighten the legs, standing up. Rotating the feet. So they're a little bit inverted and we'll get back into our forward fold. Releasing. If you want, put your hands on your chest. You can put both of them if you'd like. And I want you to take a moment, close your eyes over. Feel your heart. Every day it's working in there. Rarely do we check in with it. And yet we'll check in with our friends. What about yourself? See if you can slow it down with your breath. Exhale, extend the hands, let go of the heart, rotate back to the front of the mat. I think, I think your left leg should be in front. I'm sorry, I keep switching around. So I'm hoping it's your left leg. Hmm. We're going to go into our warrior three. So same as that single leg, forward fold, shift the weight into the front leg, extend the back leg, toes. Um, toes can point to the ground or out, whatever feels better for you. Press uh, the earth away with that leg that's on the ground. Really press it away. Find your balance. And when you do, extend your arms behind you, warrior three. I have much more stability in this leg. And that's what we notice. And exhale, bringing that back foot to the front to meet each other. Exhale, folding all the way forward and releasing as you need to. Whatever feels good to you, maybe you need to rock side to side. Hands can meet your elbows, whatever you'd like. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, slowly rise up. All the way, arms extend to the sky. Hands come together to meet at heart center. Close your eyes over. A few deep breaths here. Let's do a clearing breath together. Inhale, on your exhale, open your mouth. Make a sound if you like. And you empty yourself completely of your breath. You can find a lot of stillness in that space of the empty breath. Inhale, arms rise up to the sky again. Feeling that expansion. Exhale, hands come to heart center, forward fold, all the way down. Hands come, uh, inhale, halfway lift, so flat back, straighten the spine, exhale, bend the knees, hands come to meet the earth, and step back. 
whatever foot I haven't done, maybe we've only done it three times, that's fine. Lift one of your feet up, shift your weight forward, exhale, uh, slowly lower down, three, two, one, beautiful, untuck the toes, inhale, lifting the chest forward, cobra pose. So you're like a snake. And if you're comfortable pressing up, uh, upward facing dog. Exhale, pressing the mat away, lifting the hips, untuck the toes. Downward facing dog, beautiful. Bring your feet together at the back of the mat. Lift the left leg to the sky. This time I want you to open the hip up. I'm gonna show you with my right leg. So open the hip up, right? Bend your knee where it is. And now rotate the knee out. So we're opening the hip. The foot is still flexed. And so that's an open hip on your left leg. Inhale, tuck it in. This time we're gonna place our foot next to our right hand and our knee next to our left. Extend and we're sitting back into pigeon pose. I hope you can all see that. Working to get a right angle with our front leg if you cannot. I don't want you to be pressing down. Okay, it causes a lot of pressure on the knee. Keep that right angle. And if you have to hold yourself up, that's what you do. Okay, this is, this is stretching our left glute. Ideally, we have blocks that we can uh, rest our hands on. But if you don't have them, that's okay. I am able to sit forward. So if you can, you can do that, but not at the expense of overstretching your glute. Flex that front foot. If you keep it flexed, that always helps with um, the hamstring stretches like this. Good job guys, inhale, lifting up, tuck that back toe, use your hands, press into the earth. We're gonna lift back up into our three-legged dog. You might need to walk your hands back a little bit and back into a down dog. Feet comes to the mat, we pedal out our feet. Before we go on to our other side, I'd like you to try something. I want you to feel comfortable in your down dog Really place some weight onto your right hand. Your left hand is gonna come out. It's gonna grab your right um, calf. And we're gonna open up and look under our arm. Expanding. Exhale, back to normal down dog. And we're gonna try again on the other side. Inhale, prepare yourself. Shifting the weight into the left arm, right arm comes, grabs the calf, open up your head, peeking under your arm. What can you see? Exhale, hands come back, feet come together at the back of the mat, right leg extends, opening up the hip. So three-legged dog, bend the knee, open up the hip. Inhale, tucking that knee in, placing the ankle next to your left wrist and your knee next to your right wrist. Extending that back leg as needed, pigeon pose. Now, again, really, I want you to pay attention to if your shin is parallel to the front of your mat, your foot is flexed, that front foot is flexed. If your butt is off the ground, that is okay. We're working to get it flat, but I don't want you to be rolling over onto your butt. And I don't want you to um, overstretch your hamstring. So meet yourself where you're at, please. I've injured myself in this one before. <laughs>
and we begin to check in with ourselves as we wind down. And I know this is not comfortable for everyone to so take a few breaths. Can you find that tightness? Breathe into it and let it release. Exhale, pressing up. We're actually going to roll over into that left leg. Bring, uh, sorry, the right leg. And bring the left leg up to the front. And we're going to try king pigeon. So it's very similar pose. So I want you to try and get both your legs. Your thigh bones should be pretty much parallel. Okay. I don't want them out like this when you cross your legs. We're working to get them parallel. This means that your top leg, in my case, the left but your ankle is gonna be a little bit further over your knee than you're used to. Both your feet are flexed. So we're working to create this kind of square, excuse me, rectangle shape. So we come back, we extend our arms and we start to fold forward. Keep both your feet flexed. This will help you fold forward. So this is called King Pigeon. And this is a great alternative if the one, the single leg pigeon that we've just done, if that is too strenuous for you. There's a lot of pressure on a lot of joints in that pose. So this takes that pressure off and we get to control how much weight we put down. And as we begin to wind down, we feel our body contract again. Inhale, lifting up, and we're going to swap legs. So again, set them up so they're in that beautiful square rectangle shape, depending on the length of your legs, I guess. And again, one side will be different to the other. One knee may sit up here, that's okay. That's why we do these. Inhale, arms rise up. Exhale, folding forward. Nice work, you guys. And exhale, pressing back up. I want you to cross your legs in a comfortable seat, whatever that is to you. And we're just going to open up our chest. So again, we were just contracting. How are we now expanding? Whatever side is comfortable for you. What I want you to focus on is both your sitting bones are still on the ground. Whatever arm you're extending, I don't want your butt lifting off the ground. So can you keep that? on the ground, plant it, and still open up your chest. Hand can come, hands on the floor is either extended out or parallel to the your mat. Slightly on mat, sorry. Inhale, back up to the top, swapping sides. Feel free to close your eyes over if you'd like, just so you can feel a little bit deeper into the stretch. Exhale back to center. We're gonna lie onto the ground. We're going to grab our supine twist this time. So right leg comes down, left leg is parallel to the ground. Hand, arms extend, uh, hands on the ground, okay? So palms facing down. We're going to roll that knee over to the right side. Head comes to the left. You can use your right hand to pull the left leg down if you'd like. 
again, this is this, a similar motion to the beginning of class in our um, the flossing of the spine, right? Any kind of spinal rotation is really helping our spinal health. But again, you meet yourself where you're at. That knee comes back up, lower that left leg, right leg rises to the sky. Shin parallel to the ground, and we're going to roll over to the left side. Here, working to keep our scapulas on the ground, our shoulder blades are flat on the ground, so I don't want your right one coming off the ground as you turn. If you cannot, but you meet yourself where you're at. So keep that flat back on your upper body, just rotating that lower half. Breathe into the base of your spine. Let go of any tension. Inhale. Right leg comes back to center. I want you to bring both your knees into your chest and squeeze them. And here again, we are mimicking our balasana or child's pose just on our back this time. You feel the chest and your stomach expand as your thighs and your arms contract. If you feel this in your hips as you squeeze your legs closer to your chest, breathe into those hips. Can you let them go? Remember, pain and discomfort is momentary. Okay, slowly. And this is our last expansion of the class. To release both your legs down, we're going to move into Shavasana. Let your legs go. Palms come down either side of you. Palms facing up. All right. You can tuck your shoulders under so that gives your heart a bit of room to expand. And take a deep breath in for me, all the way in. And exhale out as you exhale, focus on your muscles letting go. And melt into the earth. And here we stay. Savasana. That's corpse pose.
Slowly begin to deepen your breath. Feel free to place your hands on your stomach if you'd like. I hope you guys can hear me. Sorry if it hasn't been able to work properly, but Inhale, and we'll slowly make our way up to a seated position. Keep your eyes closed over. Bring your hands to heart center. And take a moment to revisit any intention you set at the beginning of class. And perhaps notice if anything has shifted for you. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me and with each other. Namaste.